For this video, I'd like to talk more about the arithmetic behind complex numbers. So for this first example problem, we're given two complex numbers that we want to add together. And remember, just as a quick refresher, that a complex number is generally written in this form, where a, this number not multiplied by i, that's our real part, and this bi, this part right here, this 4 times i, this is our imaginary part. And it's imaginary because we're multiplying by i, where i is that square root of minus 1. And in general, when adding or subtracting complex numbers, we essentially just want to combine the real parts together, and then we want to combine the imaginary parts together. And that's essentially because we write complex numbers as their real numbers plus their imaginary numbers. So let's first combine those real parts. So that would be 2 plus 9. And then we want to combine the imaginary parts. And we have 4i and then minus 8i. And simplifying everything, we have 11 for the real part. And we have minus 4i for the imaginary part. So when we add these two complex numbers together, we get 11 minus 4i as the solution. And with that in mind, let's move on to a second example. And this one is specifically dealing with subtraction, but it's essentially going to work the same way. The only difference is that before I start combining anything, I want to distribute this negative to each of these terms. So I have 8 minus 4i, and then I have minus 2. And minus times minus 6i would give us plus 6i. And now that the negatives have been distributed, we can combine our real parts together. And we can also combine our imaginary parts together. So the real parts would just be 8 minus 2. So we have 8 minus 2. And then we're going to add the imaginary parts. And that would be minus 4i plus 6i. And combining everything together, what we get is 6 for our real part. And then we have minus 4i plus 6i, which is plus 2i. So 8 minus 4i, when we subtract 2 minus 6i from that, we end up with the result of 6 plus 2i. So this number here answers this question. And let's do one final example. But this time, we're going to do multiplication. And when you're multiplying two complex numbers, you can essentially use the FOIL method, since it's going to work the exact same as multiplying any two normal binomials. So what I mean by that is if we had x plus 2 times x minus 3, we would multiply this the same way we multiply this. And if it helps, you can use FOIL to kind of guide you. So multiplying the first ones together, so that would be the 3 and the 5. So we have 3 times 5. And then now we have the outer ones. So that's 3 times minus i. So that would be minus 3i. And then we have the inner ones. So that's 2i and 5. So those multiply together to give us plus 10i. And finally, we have this last terms. So that's the 2i and the minus i. So that would give us minus 2i squared. And once we've multiplied this out, we're going to just simplify it like we did in the previous examples. We want to combine our imaginary parts, and we want to combine our real parts. The only real challenge with this one comes from this term here. What is i squared? And to think about that, let's first think about what i is. It's the square root of minus 1. And if I square everything, remember that squaring and square roots are essentially opposites of each other, and they cancel each other out. So when I square this, I just get what's left on the inside. So that would be minus 1. So we know that i squared is negative 1. So I'm going to substitute that in after simplifying. So I have 15 for 3 times 5. And then minus 3i plus 10i would be plus 7i. And then I have minus 2 times i squared, but that's negative 1. And now, finally, simplifying everything, we have 15 plus 7i plus 2. And then combining the real parts together, we have 17 plus 7i. So when we multiply these two complex numbers together, we get 17 plus 7i. 
And we could go further. We could ask, how do you divide complex numbers? And this is something we will answer, but in a later video, just because it's a little bit difficult. It's not quite as straightforward as normal division, and we have to introduce the concept of a conjugate. So in a later video, I will cover that.